Grazie. Ora il collega Tom van den Ken de la Her. Dank u wel, meneer de voorzitter. Dank u ook aan de wetenschappers die hier vanmorgen uh, aanwezig zijn. De vraag is eigenlijk heel simpel. Sinds de afwijkende resultaten van IARC komen zowel landbouwers bij mij vragen of ze nog glyfosaat kunnen gebruiken en komen mensen vragen of ze in hun tuin nog Roundup mogen gebruiken. En daarover, denk ik, uh, moet ook de discussie gaan vandaag. En is het, meneer Tarazona, aan u de vraag ook de taak van een onafhankelijk agentschap om op basis van wetenschappelijk bewijs de burger zekerheid te geven over of uh, een product al dan niet uh, ja, effecten heeft op de voedselveiligheid. Vandaar de vraag, denkt u dat het haalbaar is om de procedures van uw onderzoeken meer vergelijkbaar te maken met de procedures van andere organisaties, zodat er ook sneller kan vergeleken worden en we de tijd van onzekerheid tot een minimum kunnen beperken? Te meer... Zeer waarschijnlijk, denk ik, komen er nog verschillende, of zullen er nog verschillende conclusies ontstaan rond andere gewasbeschermingsmiddelen. Hoe kunnen we ervoor zorgen dat deze discussies niet opnieuw uitmonden in angstdebatten zoals we die vandaag hebben? Dank u. Professor Danizona. Thank you for the question. Obviously, the protection of the, of the public as well as the protection from the EU, EU citizen and the protection of the farmers is a key element for us. I think that it's clear in our conclusion that uh, glyphosate can be used safely, but there are some measures. So glyphosate, according to our, our assessment, is not carcinogenic, but obviously is toxic and needs to be controlled as most pesticides with care. So if the farmers apply the, the products containing glyphosate according to the rules and the authorization process, I think that safe use can be clearly demonstrated. <laughs> Regarding the methodology, for the classification in particular, we are already using the, the methodology that has been agreed by the United Nations. I think that there is no surprise that all the regulatory agencies after us that are also using the same methodology have exactly the same conclusion that us on carcinogenicity. All of us ha have concluded based on evidence, and it's clear that it's also based on evidence that was not available to IAR at the time of the, of the assessment, that glyphosate, the active satan, is not carcinogenic. We have all identified other risks. The risks are included in the assessment, and I think it's important as well to mention that the acute reference dose that I was mentioned before is also an essential element for the protection also for the farmers as well as for the consumers. And we are currently finalizing the opinion that covers all the uses in the EU, and we will be able to publish, as announced before the end of the year, the assessment for every single use and what should be the maximum residual li limits for glyphosate in food in the EU uh, uh, for every single use that has been authorized, as well as import tolerance from outside the EU. Thank you. Bene, grazie. Grazie, professor José Tarazona. Andiamo con l'ultima domanda. John Stewart Agnew. Th thank you, Chairman. Uh, to Dr. Kate Guyton, uh, a dose of realism. Uh, I'm often complimented on how healthy I look, despite the fact that for 30 years I handled pesticides, including, including glyphosate, not particularly safely in my early days. I'm still here, so it can't be that bad. Uh, secondly, second, will you give me extra time for the interruptions, Chairman? Jose Bovo is being awkward. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Kate Guyton about uh, the subject that uh, Richard Ashworth was talking about, and that's the, the carcinogenity rating. He gave three household products that are as dangerous, apparently, as glyphosate. I can add four more things, working night shifts, cutting human hair, sitting in front of a log fire, and eating processed meat. If we are going to ban glyphosate on the strength of its carcinogenic risk, don't you agree we have to ban these things as well? Thank you. Grazie. E adesso la risposta alla collega Gaillon. Thank you for this question. I think... Uh, Uh, let me just clear up a couple of points. So ours is a hazard classification. As I pointed out, the limited evidence is based on studies of people who were working uh, in certain occupations. We didn't actually have any data whatsoever on manufacturing workers, not the level to which they had been exposed, and no studies of cancer risk in them either. Once a hazard has been established, It doesn't mean that every single person who is exposed will get cancer.
cancer. I think we can look at uh, tobacco smoking, which is a known uh, human carcinogen and has been for a long time. The tobacco industry tried to make this argument over and over again that different people were surviving uh, tobacco smoking and therefore there is no risk. That is not the point. The point is that there, if you look across people who are smoking and you compare them to people who aren't, you will see more cancers in the people that are. It's not 100%. It is a very large, it's about a tenfold increase in risk. It doesn't mean that there are people who smoke who will not get cancer. That, that will certainly, certainly occur. Um, so after our evaluation is done, a next step can be a risk <coughs> assessment. A risk assessment is, takes the information from the hazard and then looks at the dose at which the cancers were observed. Um, and this exercise can be done for, for <coughs> cigarette smoking, for example. I'm telling you it's a hazard. I'm not going to tell you how many cigarettes you must smoke in order to get cancer. Okay, that process is a risk assessment. At the same time, you can take measures that are hazard based, based on our evaluation of glyphosate, the state of California, which is about the sixth largest economy in the world, has required labeling of the product. This is just a warning so that people are aware that this product uh, is recognized by the state of California to cause cancer. If you do not have a warning, you will not have protection of workers. So it's okay. a very simple thing that, that Thank people you. have done. Bene, siamo arrivati alla conclusione di questo primo panel e voglio ringraziare tutti i colleghi del Parlamento, gli esperti, i nostri distinti ospiti per i contributi. Il dibattito è stato un dibattito vivo che mostra l'interesse che entrambi le commissioni hanno e adesso ehm, credo sia ehm, in perfetto orario il momento di dare la parola alla nostra Presidente Valian per iniziare il secondo panel. Grazie ancora a tutti.